Hello everyone, this is Darren Keaton with Tax Savvy and today I'm going to be using my new firebox and I'll be cooking a bush pot meal here, some chicken and dumplings and see how we do. Okay, so here's the firebox in its package. You just open it up and it has like some extra little grates and uh, different options you can do. I'll get to that a little later. And then it comes in this little bag here so when you put it away it doesn't dirty up the rest of your pack. And I've already kind of taken these out a little bit. And the simple thing about this is, you just open it up this way, and when you do, it pops this little plate out, and you just fold it out, like so, and then flip down, sorry, flip down the lid like this right here, and then here it is. And all you have to do then is just kind of add in the uh, plate. Okay, so for safety reasons, I'm gonna put it in this little tray right here, but here's the uh, pan right here you can take in and out and you'll see down here that you can kind of this is your ash pan and you can see how it's got these holes right here where you, we're, I'm going to try like a charcoal briquette uh, rocket stove type, type stuff so let's see how it goes so what I'll do is give me some charcoal okay so what I've done is I've kind of aligned them around so there's kind of a hole in the center so the oxygen can come up through and uh, get us a good little uh, Airflow, so we have a kind of torch effect. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little briquette and get it started. So what I've done is I've used one of my little uh, Zippo outdoor case fire starters uh, that I got from Battle Box. I'm just gonna get a chunk of this, kind of break it off, and put it into this kit here and start it up. All right, so I've got it in the center there. I'm gonna give me a little lighter. Sorry guys, no uh, flint or fire steel today. We're gonna go a little bit more traditional. I'm going to get this thing going, kind of watch it uh, heat up, and then we'll start our boil. So the fire's starting to take off. You can see that it's vented on all sides and here and on the other side, over here, there's another port where you can start putting in sticks if you'd like. This firebox has many different applications you can use uh, from transia st or from stoves, from oil, from you name it, but you can put any kind of fuel in here. But look how it's got that torch effect all that fire is coming right out from the center and it's kind of like sucking the air in and pushing it out and it's going to make for a very effective burn so again we'll just let this thing get going get a little more heated up and then we'll start our pot all right so while the fire box is doing this thing i kind of want to pan over and show you i got a zebra pot that i'm going to be cooking my chicken and dumplings this is kind of a recipe or homage to Dave Canterbury. He, he kind of showed something very similar to this. So I'm trying to do my take on it. Uh, it looked really good in the video. What I did was I got some dried, I'm trying, this is my take on dried vegetables. I couldn't really find any, so I've got some on Amazon coming to me. But what I did is I got some green, dried or dehydrated uh, split peas and then some uh, red lentils. So that's gonna kind of be my little vegetable take on this. Uh, I've got some of this uh, Bisquick and this is like the complete size all you have to do is just add water so this is something you can pack you know really light in your bag I got some of this Sweet Sue uh, premium chicken breast so it's in this little uh, retort bag here it'll stay uh, uh, good for a very long time and it's very thin and packable got some bouillon coups for, for chicken I also got some Idaho mashed potatoes this will be kind of a thickening agent here and so what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get me some water just put, put it right in the bag and kind of mix me up some dumplings and uh, then I'll go ahead and w put the pot on put the vegetables in kind of let that get boiled down a little bit uh, and then we'll go from there all right so what I'm gonna do is get in this little biscuit bag here kind of shake it down a little bit cut it open and what you could do is, once you cut this open, if, you want to, if you're out in the trail, you can always get some of those little paper clips and kind of reseal it back up. So I'm going to get into here, uh, put some water in, and uh, get us some biscuits made. All right, so what you do is you just open the bag up like this. And what we're going to do is take my cup here and pour a little bit of water in, not too much. Then I'm going to get my fork and just kind of milk, mix this thing up until I get like a little ball. So what I'm doing is just kind of add my water in and kind of make myself a little dough ball right in the bag. Get a little more water.
what I'm going to do is, just use your hands here. It just kind of rolls this thing up a little bit. And you want to make about like a one inch golf ball. So I'm going to get this through here prepared, get a couple more made up, and I'll be right back. All right, so after further ado here, I've noticed I've got a quite a large uh, pot. So what I did was I poured everything in this bag here, and I poured some water in here, and I'm going to use the bag itself to kind of make, make up this mix for me. I think it'll be a lot cleaner, a lot easier to deal with. So I'm going to work on getting that all nice and mixed. Put a little bit more in here. Actually, we'll go ahead and put that one I did back in here for just a a little more water. And just use this right here to kind of mead and get this into the right consistency that I'm looking for. So I'll continue doing this and I'll be right back with you. All right guys, so what I had to do was I put some of that powder into this cup right here. So I made my dough balls. It was a little good and doughy, but I've uh, powdered it back over so these guys can kind of thicken up a little bit so I think this is good for right now and then I can also add a little more of this into my pot for a thickener so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is go ahead and put the pot on the fire it's getting about right where I want it and we'll start to boil so what I did was I filled this thing up with some water put it about halfway well here let me put my uh forgot you gotta put your uh your fire sticks on so it'll sit on there nicely so you'll see that kind of sits there and there. And I'll get my other fire stick, which I was using as a stirrer. They have multi-uses. And put it on right there. You see how these got these little grooves that they sit on? Now I'll go ahead and put my pot, set it right on there. And we'll go ahead and get this thing to a rolling boil. All right, so I got the pot on. I got it about halfway full of uh, regular water. Got my coals uh, on effect. So we'll see how long that thing it takes us to get this thing to boil. It's about 7.07 and I'll come back to you when it's starting to boil. So one thing I'd like to kind of note that, you know, I kind of coated the outside of this pan with a little bit of soap to see if it would kind of cut down on the soot. But I opened up just slightly this little port right here to let some wind come in and I kind of noticed I got a sweet gum tree up here at my house that just loves dropping those very irritating little balls that kind of hurt you when you step on them. So it's got an open port here. So every once in a while I want to do a little long maintenance. I can pop that in there and kind of uh, increase the heat a little bit as needed, as you can see that's doing. And uh, I mean, I really like this fire. It's putting off a good bit of heat and it just seems to be very, 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 very efficient. Here's another angle. You see how I, I threw a little sweet gum ball in there, but you can see the coals around there. It's just got that huge little torch coming right up from the middle. And it's just putting some awesome heat directly onto the center of that pot. Let me kind of catch it there a little bit. You can kind of see how it's just coming right up from the top. All right, so it's been about seven or eight minutes. Let me give this thing a quick look. It's making a little bit of noise. Oh yeah, that's definitely starting to bubble up. Maybe not quite a rolling boil, but I think it's good enough for me to start putting in some of my uh, ingredients. So just hang tight. All right, so as I said, I'm gonna put some of these dehydrated uh, vegetables in, or my version of those. So I got be kind of a big spoon here. I'm trying to get me some one of those military spoons, but it's a rather large pot here, so I'm gonna put about four scoops of these dehydrated vegetables okay then we're going to get some of these little bouillon cubes here I just got this uh, noir brand here so I'm gonna take about two or three of these pop them in let it get to a rolling boil then I'll go ahead and put the chicken and my dumplings in 
So this is what it looked like, these little bouillon cubes, which are good to take with you on your backpack or bug out bag. It's a lot of flavor that'll uh, go a long way. All right, so just checking in on it. It is certainly getting a little hot and a little uh, patinaed, if you will. Instead of that nice shiny silver, it's been uh, heat treated, if you will. And the bowl, the pot with the flame comes up, gets a little soot. But we'll try to clean that off. That just gives it good character. So, so far, I'm pleased. It's going to town. It's steadily uh, bubbling up and rising up, steaming. I'll check in on it here in about another uh, 10 minutes. All right, so I've taken the uh, arm down. I'm going to lift this thing up here with my knife, and as you can see, I am at a good rolling boil here. I'll scoop some of this around. You can see these veggies are starting to get a little bit rehydrated, starting to get a little weight to it. So what I'm going to do now is throw in the chicken and going to go ahead and throw in the uh, biscuits. So stay with me. All right, so here's where we're going to put the uh, chicken in. Like I said, this is already pre-cooked, but I want to go ahead and get in here to mix in with that, that bouillon and that stock and give it some really good flavor. So these are really cool. These are only cost like two or three bucks at Kroger. Um, really good chicken in here, as you can see. Very robust. I mean, if you were out there on the trail and you didn't have no way to heat up any food, you could just pop that open like that and go to town. So I'm going to go ahead and add this in. Try not to get all... And this hot water splashed in on me. All right, and one of the things I liked about this was there was no drain to this. It was all ready to go. So, got that going in there. Now that I add that in, that boil's kind of slowed down, so I'm gonna put the lid back on it to continue that boil. And then we'll go ahead and put the, uh, the dumplings in. All right, so now that's at a good rolling boil. And it's reduced down a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and get a little tray of these uh, biscuits that are rolled out. Kind of drop them in. So you can see I kind of like coated them a little bit of that powder. And we're going to drop those in. And it's doing exactly what I want it to do. It's kind of floating a little bit. And as soon as I start to put these in, it's going to slow that boil down a little bit. Not doing too bad. Now these are pretty big, so I do plan on these kind of breaking up when I start to stir a little bit, but I want them to kind of cook, you know, and get a little doughy, so I want them to kind of maintain their shape a little bit. So, just kind of show you what I'm doing, I'm kind of rolling around this dough so they keep nice and padded. And this is kind of a cheesy garlic flavor, which is kind of, I think it's going to be a little interesting. And while I'm at it, go ahead and put some more of this flour in there, really start to get that thickening process going. All right, so like I said, it kind of slowed that boiling down just a hair. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my knife. This is has been a little hot. Put it right on there to kind of aid in the boiling a little bit. Then when it starts boiling back up, I'll uh, go ahead and take it off and kind of let some of that air start to, or let, let that, some of that moisture start to evaporate off so it'll start to continue to reduce. All right, so I took off the lid, just kind of do some checking. You can see these things have puffed up something nice. And like I said, I'm not going to quite break them up just yet. I want them to kind of cook a little bit more. But this thing is really starting to reduce down like I want it to. It kind of was up to here a little bit, and it's coming down here. So um, one little trick I learned, or was kind of seen here, if my fire starts to die down, all I got to do is kind of like throw just a couple sticks in there or any kind of little twigs or whatever, and it just gets that fire readjusted and gets it good and hot. So... Just takes very little to feed this uh, firebox. So, so far, just very happy with it. All right, so now we're gonna open this thing up and give it another look. And probably gonna try to add in some of my uh, potato mix here just to kind of give it a little bit of a thickener. So, oh yeah. Boiling up nicely. And now I may start kind of breaking up these biscuits just a hair. Give it a good stir, make sure nothing's sticking on the bottom. And while I'm at it, I'll go ahead and get this some Idaho potatoes here. And just I'll pour in a little bit of this just to kind of thicken it up a little bit. This is gonna be a hearty meal. The way I see it, this should feed about four people. Um, it is definitely starting to thicken up a lot. 
just kind of get the bottom of this thing. It uh, honestly, uh, when I've cooked some of this stuff before, I had a tripod over an open fire and I was able to kind of lower the pot down. So this has got a little more direct heat um, at the start. So, but nothing's really sticking to the bottom that I can see, and it's starting to get nice and thick. So what I'm going to do is probably just kind of tilt the pot on there so I can let some of this uh, reduce down a bit more and thicken up. And so far I am happy. So right now you can see it's on a good little simmer there, kind of bub bubbling up a little bit. So I'll just kind of put this lid on about like so, so that stuff can evaporate out and reduce down even more. Alright guys, so I just took the lid off and I'm talking about dumplings. It's nice, creamy, and thick. And like I said, I like, I like to leave some of them a little, little small, a little big, so I can break them up in my bowl. And that's about what I'm ready to do right now, is pour this out into my bowl and take a quick bite. As you can see, you know, when I could sit here and just ladle this, I mean, it's just thick, creamy, and delicious. So, put this, I can leave this in the side here, you know. Get me a proper camping ladle here, and I got my bowl I made when I was a kid, ceramic, so I can hold it. I'll see if I can scoop me out a decent size biscuit or dumpling. And as you can see, guys, that's just looking good to me. So, what do you think? chunks of chicken big dumpling here and kind of crack into as i like it's a little nice and doughy in the center like i like it and all you have to do is kind of just salt and pepper to taste so tell me what you think below in the comments i wish y'all was here to eat it with me all right guys this is darren keaton with tax savvy I want to wish you guys a blessed evening i'm about to say me a quick prayer and eat dinner